Here I'm going to take an acid base indicator called methyl red and I'm going to add it to a weak acid solution of acetic acid. The acetic acid is 0.1 molar, it's 10 milliliters, and then I've diluted it a little bit with some distilled water to fully cover the pH meter. And I'm going to start adding sodium hydroxide in a minute, which is in a burette above the setup here. Um, before that, right here, I'm setting up our lab quest so that it will track the pH. So right now we're starting at the very beginning with just the weak acid. And now the sodium hydroxide is being added, and so you'll see that pH starting to rise. As the acetic acid is converted into the acetate, you're going to get into kind of a buffering region now. So the pH is not going to change a ton. Now, at some point, the pH is going to be high enough where the color of the indicator is going to change. And that is called the end point of the titration. And that's usually used when we don't have a pH indicator, uh, like a meter like I have here, to tell us that the reaction is complete and the equal amounts have been added. But this is demonstrating what happens when you choose the wrong indicator. You can now start to see the color of that indicator change to kind of an orangish pink and now a yellowish orange and then finally a yellow. So right now is where the end point is occurring. So if you look, that's at that pH, and that's also at this time or volume of base that's been added. But we're not at the equivalence point yet. So our end point is much sooner than our equivalence point. Our equivalence point is going to be when there's the large inflection. So you can see here that the slope is increasing very rapidly all of a sudden. That is our equivalence point right now, right? And so if you trace that down to the bottom of the screen, that's the volume of base required to get to the equivalence point compared to where our endpoint told us the reaction was over. So by choosing the wrong indicator, our answer is off by a significant quantity. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the same titration with the exact same uh, acid and base, but now we're going to put a different indicator in. So now we're adding phenolphthalein to this, and that has a pK of 9, so that's going to change color at, at when the pH is within a, a unit of 9. Okay, so we're starting with our acetic acid again. Now I'm adding the phenolphthalein to it, and now I've started the uh, pH meter, and the base is coming in. So you can see the pH starting to rise. We're into our buffer region of the titration curve. And what we're going to see here is that the color is not going to change from, from colorless into pink until we get to that equivalence point. So by choosing an indicator where the pK is very near to what the pH is at equivalence, we get a much better correlation between the end point and the equivalence point. So we're now starting to see some flashes of pink, but it has not gone completely pink until right now. And now if you look over to the pH curve, we're right where the equivalence point is. And so therefore, our equivalence point and our end point are nearly identical, and that's optimal to getting a good result. In this next example, we're going to run the opposite titration. Now we're doing a weak base with a strong acid being added to it. So now I'm using the phenolphthalein again, but this time when I run the titration, we're going to see that the phenolphthalein is not a good choice for this particular titration. So right now we're starting with the pH up at 11 because we have a, a weak base present, and it's 0.1 molar ammonia, uh, 10 milliliters with some distilled water. And now as I add the hydrochloric acid, we see the pH starting to decrease. But this time, we're still going to have this color change occur at about pH of 9. And that's not going to be where the equivalence point is. So you can see the pink color is starting to get a little bit lighter. And then pretty soon, it's going to fade away to colorless. And we're still in the middle of our buffering region. Okay, So right now, we're getting very faint. And now it looks like we've gone to colorless. But if you look on the screen, and the titration curve, we're not at the point where, where we're at our equivalence point. So our end point is kind of midway between these first two points on the graph, but now we're getting to our equivalence point, which is all the way past that first bar. And so our equivalence point and end point vary by a great degree. So if we were to assume the end point was the equivalence point without a pH meter, then we would get an answer that, that is assuming that it took significantly less quantity of strong acid to neutralize all of the weak base.
I'm going to run one more titration, but this time we're going to make sure that we do not end up where our endpoint and equivalence point are far off from each other. We want our endpoint to be at the equivalence point, not well before it. So this time we're going to use a different indicator with the same titration as we ran in the third set. So here we're going to be using uh, the methyl red with our weak base, ammonia. So I'm going to add that to that, and that's going to turn yellow, yellow, I believe. Okay, so we have our 0.1 molar ammonia. It's been diluted with some distilled water. And now we're going to add the hydrochloric acid to it. That's 0.1 molar as well. And I'm going to run the pH meter here to kind of give us our titration curve. This time when we run it, this is going to work where the equivalence point and the end point should be about the same. And so therefore, if we weren't using a pH meter, we would get a good set of information to figure out what the unknown concentration of something is. So right now we're into our buffering region. We just started adding the strong acid to it. Um, and, our, and our color is staying the yellow that it's supposed to be. Probably around the half equivalence point right around now. So we have a very flat slope. So now you can see that we're starting to get a color change and there's our color change right there. And you can see that we're at the point where we're at our equivalence point, we're getting that large slope. And so therefore our endpoint and equivalence point are close together.